health is something that most people go through their lives taking for granted. We can live our lives from day to day without ever giving a second thought to the quality of our health. But when something happens to damage one's health, finding good medical care becomes an immediate necessity. In most black communities, finding good health care at a time of need can be very difficult. It's often virtually impossible to find available quality medical care. There's a great need for health care facilities in our communities, and there's a great need for health care personnel who can minister to the needs of the people. This need will only be alleviated when more talented young black people commit themselves to the study of and the practice of medicine. This film is an effort to get such young black people to answer the call. Wow! Medicine is something that all of you all have considered to some extent or another, you know. You know, I've definitely decided one way or the other, but you, you've considered it. And uh, I wonder if, if we've ever thought about why medicine should be the choice. And if you really get down to it and try to take it apart and, you know, like see what it really consists of is a study of people, study of their bodies and study of their minds and study of the whole person as he fits into society, you know. And like all of us have bodies, we all have minds, and we, we're all people who fit into society. So like everybody, whether they have any interest in medicine or not, is really relevant to medicine, especially talented young black youngsters. We don't have a whole lot of black practicing physicians available right now. Um, I could try to give you the statistics comparing the number available in the black community, the number available in the white community, et cetera. That's kind of irrelevant. When you sort of think about the fact that if you go over to the hospital right now to the emergency room and try to get some care for this pain in your side that you think is about to kill you, you know, you might sit there for three hours before you get to see a doctor. Four or five hours. If they had as many doctors as were needed, you just wouldn't have to wait there that long. It's sort of generally thought that medicine is a long, drawn-out period of study, and that's not a lie. There are not very many areas, very many professions that require more time and formal study. But again, you have to go back to the question of why are you doing it? And do you want to do it? This takes us immediately into the problem of, of the struggle that black people have right now. We as black people recognize that we've got a few places to go. We've got a few things to do. And the black doctor is no less aware of that. And he recognizes that he has a role in trying to further the interest of the struggle. The individuals in the struggle are all family members in some sort of another. Everybody has, a, has a, a basic family structure, and we oftentimes try to say one of the things that are really, really relevant right now are the things concerning black people getting squared away, black people getting their rights and getting their privileges and progress that they deserve. But you can't give a man uh, progress that he deserves when he's not in a, in a physical condition to, to accept it. Medicine is a, is a very uh, varied area. There's a whole lot of variety in the field of medicine. People who are medical practitioners who never see a patient from, from day to day. You know, they, they're, they're in a lab all the time. There are people who see patients constantly and never go in a lab. And there are people who, are, who have office jobs and sit at desks all day. There are people who study various parts of the body. Some people are, are interested in the entire body. 
a family physician, for example, would be a man who's interested not only in the entire body, but the entire patient. And all your family problems, uh, medical and uh, social and otherwise, would be channeled into him. Whereas another, another physician might have a very, very small and very, very uh, closed view of his patient. He might be simply a heart specialist, and his all-day job would be simply to look at maybe electrocardiograms from hearts. Or maybe a man would be simply a, a, a radiologist, and all he does is look at x-rays all day long. I am a cardiologist, and as a cardiologist, this requires a number of years of training. At the present time, I'm the only uh, black cardiologist in the state of Maryland. I go between 12 to 14, 16 hours a day. So that gives you some idea of uh, the fact that I am very busy and quite overloaded, and we could use certainly uh, two to three more cardiologists in a city of this size. I think it's important for uh, a young person to, to realize early in the game that it's a long, tedious process. Uh, secondly, I think that uh, if they feel at that point they're, that they're interested in the medicine, they should try to uh, get to know a physician like myself or someone else uh, who's in, already in medicine to help them to decide upon uh, what field they may be interested in, whether it's general practice, a specialty like mine, or some other type of specialty. Uh, the advice and the uh, counseling they get apparently uh, isn't adequate, especially the black kids, which is most of my experience, are not uh, very well informed in terms of what is involved in medicine, how to get into medicine, financial aid available, and all the other details concerned with choosing medicine as a profession. So I think they would do well to get to know someone who's in the profession and who's uh, recently enough uh, trained that he's aware of all the new changes if they want to know just what's involved in getting into medicine. So the doctor is responsible to his patient as a total person, regardless of how much he, he specializes in the long run. Some doctors make a point of viewing the patient as a total person, and we might call those family physicians or general practitioners. But even the doctor who's on the other end of, the, of specialization, he's always working for the good of the patient. I mean, his primary responsibility, his primary access to the patient may be through the scalpel and making some surgery and, you know, going in and making a correction. But still, he can't get away from the fact that he's removing that tumor from a total person, you know? And that tumor, once it's gone, Will, will have some effect on the totality of the person. You know, the person is now a better person all the way around. He's more able to, to carry out his, his life's responsibilities. Your effect always goes beyond the immediately obvious. This is true of black doctors and black communities, rural doctors in rural communities, and city doctors in city communities. Dr. Williams, how'd you happen to come to uh, Mountain Bayou? Well, um, when I finished my residency, I um, was looking for a job. First of all, I was looking for some place to go. I um, was out in Oregon, and I wanted to come back to our home and do some kind of a community health project like this. I uh, looked at several others uh, in Los Angeles and Boston and in Chicago and I came to visit the project here. And um, after my visit, I was just sold on it. I just had to come to the Delta. This is one of the families that you uh, visit? Yeah. How many families do you visit uh, in the area? In the area, um, I have like, it's still working area. We have something like about 50. Uh, we go out in the homes. And like I said, when I first started to visit this home, they didn't have water. Their children was washing, like, you know, water, when it rained out the roadside ditches. And so, when they, I, the last rain it was this year, I came out and the kids was washing and I backed out and I asked them why. They were washing, why, why, why they was in the water and they said, it's washing the baby's diapers. So, I said, well, that's the only way you can get water. And they said, yeah. So, I went on back to the health center and I made our referral to Environmental Health, which was in July. Then I went on my vacation the day I made out to it for two weeks. When I came back, no action had been taken. So I got on the telephone and I called. 
and I made my report why, you know, asking why they hadn't put water at this family's house, and so they said they didn't think it was emergency. And when I come and tell them why, you know, they needed water, they come out immediately that day and, you know, took irritor of the house, and they say they came out and they started putting in water. How are you? Just look at Sheila. She's really in a good mood now, huh? Well, you in the best position to be examined. The skin rash on her face seems to be clearing up, doesn't it? Let's just get her all over, huh? I'm just going to take this off. Why don't you stand over here with me so she she wakes up, she won't be frightened. Okay. Okay, I'll just have a quick look at the baby. Family physicians are people who look at a family as an entity, as a, as a unique whole. He, he's a general physician. I think it's going to get increasingly popular as more doctors consider the idea of community medicine. Community medicine is, is an effort to, uh, to diagnose the ills, to help the whole of the community. How many? How many years old are you, Evelyn? Well, you know, I don't How's the baby's cold, Mrs. It's better? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to look in her ears now, so you should come. Oh, can you hold her head for me? She's going to jump for this. Uh -huh. Yeah, just hold her head still. Okay, let's look in the other side. Well, the rash seems to be clearing up nicely. She seems to be coming along real well. Come on, Martin. Go and see what's going on. Come over here. There you are. <laughs> He's not too shy, is he? How are you? Huh? How old are you? You look like a nice little fellow. Well. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we should be getting along, Mrs. Sims. We've got some more calls to make. What's your trouble, Mark? Well, I'll be looking to see you in the clinic a couple of weeks, and uh, if you have any problems, come in before then. Okay. Okay? How do we get from here as juniors and seniors in Dunbar High School to practicing medicine? Now, the first thing that a person who's in high school has to do, of course, uh, in the direction of becoming a doctor is, uh, is be a person of character with um, uh, a positive academic orientation, you know, which means being a good student, and being a good person for uh, future study interests, the most important uh, academic courses that one takes in high school are what? Math, uh, science, and English. Math and science pretty much go hand in hand in any kind of scientific study, you know? And you can't really pursue science too far without employing mathematics to some extent. And you really can't, um, you can't employ either one of those very well if you don't have the ability to communicate. And that's what English is all about. And that's, that's all very important. And after a person has successfully hooked these up in high school, the next step is college. And uh, it becomes quite a bit easier to get into college if you've been a good student in high school and if you have the, the positive uh, character uh, references and character traits from high school. But in college, you pursue what's called a pre-medicine pre curriculum. In college, uh, you, you take a, a group of courses that are designed to prepare you for medical school. You, uh, during your senior year of college, you uh, 
uh, apply to medical schools. And uh, you send your transcript of grades, and they look you over, and they read uh, people's impressions of you, references from instructors. And uh, if they like what the paper says, what the uh, paperwork says, the references and the grades, they then call you for an interview. And you come to the medical school, and you sit and talk with uh, two or three physicians for a while, and you tell them why you want to be a doctor and uh, what your interests in medicine are, and you tell them something about your background, and you tell them uh, various things that, that they just may be interested in knowing about you. On the basis of all this data, written data, and the uh, contact in the interview, they accept you or don't accept you to the medical school. And people usually apply to a whole group of schools, and uh, they ex are accepted to, to one or more, and then, then they make their choice. Medical schools make an attempt to take in people who are, are deserving of the kind of respect that people accord a doctor. And a doctor gets a lot of respect. It's like an important realization to have from right now, you know, that as you go along, as you get closer and closer to the MD, and as you get beyond the degree itself and start actually practicing medicine, you are, in fact, uh, a person with an extra measure of responsibility. Medicine, by the way, is, is a very expanding and growing field. It's an old profession. People didn't just start practicing medicine 100 years ago. Uh, our ancestors were practicing medicine back in Africa a long, long time ago. They, they had some ideas, some of which we don't believe in anymore, but they also had some things that worked. They made their contribution. I mean, they, they sort of were setting the foundation upon which the present medicine has been built. I was inspired to get into medicine by my family doctor in Alabama. The family doctor in Alabama was a mighty fine man. He was a black man, and, and he got me interested in it. I had to work my way through school. I worked on phone calls, dining calls, and everything else to get sufficient money to pay tuition. And it was a struggle. And I think all our young men are going to have some struggle, although now I believe it's much better because they can uh, get certain scholarships and certain aid that they couldn't get back in those days. You just had to struggle your way through. When I came along, they were, I was working with certain of the Hopkins group. And then I was also having to train my own group. And as the boys developed, they began to take over some of the special fields. And I developed a good number of men and worked with me in surgery and several other specialties in the hospital. My greatest uh, inspiration to a large extent since I've been in medicine was what I got out of helping and training the younger physicians who came as interns and stayed some of them for three or four years as residents. And that was a great inspiration to me because a large percentage of those men are still practicing all various, over various sections of the country. study medicine, a young black doctor, that he now has more opportunity than he's ever had. Progress to become proficient and to do many of the things that have been denied him in the past. If he goes at it like I think he should without a monetary consideration, but a consideration of the health of our people, 
and they killed him. Thank you. 